All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So here are the vacuum pumps that I've been using in several of my recent videos. And uh, with these, I'm able to exhaust the atmospheric pressure inside of a chamber down to roughly 1 1,000th of what it is normally. So that is 99.9% .9 of the way to a perfect vacuum, which is, for most purposes, totally adequate. Unfortunately, there are some experiments I have planned that require me to bring it down to roughly a millionth of atmospheric pressure. So I need to add a few more nines to that value. In order to achieve those levels of vacuum, I was considering purchasing either a turbo molecular pump or a diffusion pump, and I may still yet. But while I was researching it, I decided to look up what they used back in the old days before those types of pumps even existed. You know, what did uh, Thomas Edison use to evacuate his light bulbs, and, and what did Crookes use to evacuate his Crookes tubes? The answer to that is the Sprengel pump. I probably said that completely wrong, but the idea is that you use droplets of falling mercury to evacuate a chamber, and theoretically it can achieve vacuum levels down to the vapor pressure of mercury, which actually is quite low, and that would be more inadequate for projects that I have planned. Also, I've got loads of mercury. In fact, the more I look into this pump, the more I want to build it. And so you know what? I got me some glass. Let's see if I can actually build it. Now, I don't think one of these pumps has actually been used since color photography came about, and so I don't really have any good photographs of it, so I'm going to have to make guesses on most of the dimensions. But I think I can figure it out, and it's more fun this way. Now, uh, the first thing i got to do with this is cut some down and make a T. You know, I've got to have somewhere for the mercury to go in, somewhere for it to come out, and somewhere for me to hook up to a, a vacuum chamber. So I got a little diamond here I'm going to use to cut the tubing. Let's say about yay long for the first T. Maybe a little longer. Let's uh, just run this diamond around. Ow. It's actually sharp. Let's run the diamond around to score it. Now I should just be able to snap that off. Excellent. So now for the fun part. I don't have any specialized glass blowing equipment. In fact, all I've got is a blowtorch. I probably should buy something at some point, but I think it'll work still. So let's uh, seal one end, let's blow a bubble, and then attach that to there. Sounds simple enough. Okay, so there's the T. It could be better, but as long as it seals, it should work. Now let's make the uh, mercury dropper to go inside of this. So to do that, I'm going to stretch the tube really thin. That way the mercury can only come through a very tiny hole. Okay, so the glass is now stretched to the point where you can probably not even see it on the camera. I'm going to break it right about there. Now there should be a very tiny opening for the mercury to come through. That should give me some very small droplets. Now I just got to stick this into there. I think the best way to do that is to flare this out and then heat it up again and seal those together. There we go. The very thin tube to drop the mercury is now actually down below the junction here. So I don't know exactly how large in diameter or how long the capillary tube needs to be, but this is definitely far too short and far too wide. So I'm going to stretch this out to well, about four or five feet and uh, we'll go with that. So here's the pump nearly complete. You can see I've got my capillary tube on here. I think it's uh, 120 centimeters long that I managed to make. And uh, you can see I've got the glass turned around. And uh, for now I've got a plastic tube stuck on here because I'm not really sure where I should put the mercury reservoir. So I want to be able to move it around. 
So here's the completed pump. I've glued it to a 2x4 to keep it uh, you know, stable so it don't break accidentally. You can see there's a plastic tote down here to catch any mercury droplets, although I probably wouldn't mind the excuse to clean the garage. So I've got a little reservoir here which I'll be using to fill with mercury, and I can uh, change its height however it needs to be. And uh, for the uh, chamber that I'll be evacuating, I thought, uh, why don't I try this Crooks radiometer here? See, I broke the top off of it, thereby destroying it because it does need some vacuum in there to operate. But uh, the idea here is that I'll regenerate that vacuum with this pump and continue down until the point where it stops working because it does need a little tiny bit of gas in order to work. In fact, Applied Science did a really nice video on this, which I'll be linking down in the description. Based off of his data, I should be able to estimate what the level of vacuum is, judging by how fast the radiometer turns. Okay, so there's the radiometer attached. Now this amount of light would have normally made it spin, but as you can see it is not spinning currently. That's because the air pressure is way too high for it to operate. Okay, so the first pound of mercury is going in. That's one problem. It's going to be clear full of air. I got the air bubbles out. Now when I lift this up, the mercury should head right on into the system. I'm assuming we don't have any major leaks should start pulling a vacuum. Okay, there's the first drop. So they went down without trouble. Carrying a little bit of air with it. Excellent. So I don't know if this is a big problem, but the mercury appears to pile up in this junction right there and then go down in huge slugs. Whereas I would rather it go down, like each individual drop go down through the tube. I don't know if that problem will solve itself, because I'm operating at near atmospheric pressure right now. But uh, it's definitely something to possibly fix if I ever build one of these again. So it's horrendously slow, but it is working. It is capturing a little bit of gas and shoving it out every few minutes. And if it keeps that up, then by the end of next week I should have a pretty good vacuum in here, right? <laughs> so it's been two days since my last cut and I've had this thing running probably at least 24 hours and I've noticed that uh, today that it has sped up significantly and I think the reason for this is because I'm approaching a decent vacuum in here and the weight of the mercury is able to actually compress the gas and it's able to go down and as you'll notice the droplets are moving now, much more regularly now. So it's actually sped up its pumping ability. The radiometer still is yet to start spinning. Uh, if I nudge it a little bit, it's, it's still not spinning. And you notice that there's a little bit of mercury in here because uh, occasionally this thing would back up and it actually poured mercury over into this other thing. But uh, it seems to have stopped doing that and it only did it a couple of times. Yeah, it's actually working. The droplets are capturing little bits of air, and then the weight of the mercury pushes that down, and it goes down this tube. As you can see, it gets compressed along the way. All the way down here, and I've got it coming out of a little spout into a catchment basin. Another thing you'll notice is that I've had to move the mercury way down here. Uh, before I had it way up on top, but now I've moved it down here. That's because the vacuum is actually pulling the mercury up the tube and into the device. See, because there's a vacuum in here, it's actually pulling the mercury along. And if I have it, if I have the reservoir up on top of this cage like I had it, it would just have a stream of mercury going in and it wouldn't actually capture any droplets of air. Yeah, this thing's working. Uh, I'm going to let it run for a little while longer and uh, hopefully we can get to the point where it's actually able to start the radiometer spinning. So about every half hour or so I come in here and I suck up the mercury out of this container like this. My syringe works really well for this, although uh, I do spill some mercury occasionally because the weight of it's able to actually pull this plunger down and it comes out. <laughs> I have to hold it like this when I'm transporting it. But now I lift it up to this point up here and I squirt it into this chamber. 
the mechanical work that I'm doing to lift the mercury up that distance is ultimately what's powering this pump. This is what happens if I let it run out of mercury. As you can see, it's no longer running. My mercury is out of the chamber. But as you can tell, there's still mercury in this tube here. The weight of the mercury is actually holding the vacuum. So now all I gotta do is put more mercury in here, maybe finagle it around a little bit to get it to start flowing, and it'll start right back up. You can see, yeah, mercury is stopped right at this level. It's actually turning. I've achieved a good enough vacuum to get that thing to work. And uh, I might say the mercury up here is acting quite a bit different. Instead of sticking around inside the tube for a long time, it sort of just falls straight through. I guess that's because there's no cushioning effect of air beneath it, so the mercury is just basically free-falling through vacuum. Also, I've just noticed you can hear it making noise. Let me get the camera real close to this. Some mercury slamming around in there. <laughs> it wasn't making that noise before. But again, it's probably because there's no cushioning effect from the air, so the mercury is able to just slam together. Maybe the little bit of air that's there is being compressed, and it's causing it to basically explode on compaction. <laughs> I hope it don't break the glass. So I'd say that radiometer is now spinning faster than it was back when it was brand new out of the box. That means the vacuum level must be more ideal for it. Well, it's still pumping down. It's about 4 o'clock. So that means this thing's been running continuously for around 30 hours. Let's uh, let it go clear till tonight. One thing I think is pretty neat is those uh, bubbles of air are coming down and getting compressed to the point where they're almost not visible to the naked eye. And there's not a leak or anything, it's just that they're so close to a perfect vacuum that they're being compressed to a tiny, tiny droplet. You guys got to see how fast this thing spins when I shine my laser on it. Look at that. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to fly apart if I do it for too long. If you take a look at this tubing, you can see that there's some little tiny air bubbles on the inside of the tube. See, I can't wipe them off but there is not those little bubbles on the inside of the glass tube. Basically what this is, is the gas, the air, is actually permeating the plastic and getting in. Although this, of course, is nearly a, you know, 23 inches of mercury worth of vacuum here, so it's not very much, but it's certainly there. That's why I couldn't make the rest of this out of plastic. So as you can tell from looking out the window, it is now 8 o'clock at night, and uh, the little thing is still spinning. It's spinning a little bit slower, but that might just be because I've bumped the light. In fact, the last several times I've checked on it, which is several hours, it really... I don't think it's had any noticeable change. Looking down here, you know, I used to be able to see like little bubbles of air that would sometimes form and then eventually get worked their way out. I haven't noticed any more bubbles of air, which means this thing's no longer pumping. It is producing some nice flashes of light, which are from the electrostatic discharge of the mercury rubbing against the glass. I wouldn't call them bright flashes. In fact, I have to let my eyes adjust to total darkness for several minutes before I can see them. And to show them on camera, I'll probably have to turn up the brightness of the video. But yeah, the radiometer still is spinning, which means the pressure is not low enough to stop it. Now, I was sort of puzzled about that because the temperature in here right now is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, the mercury's vapor pressure should be in the submicron level, which would at least have this thing going rather slowly. But uh, if you look real close here, on the inside of this bulb, you can see little droplets of mercury condensing on it, but not on this side. That tells me that this light is heating up the glass and causing the mercury to vaporize. The pressure is still obviously quite low. My guess is around 5 to 10 microns, which is still better than I've ever been able to do, but it's actually about the perfect pressure for this radiometer to work. In order to achieve a higher vacuum, what I need to do is actually cool this down. If it's hot like this, then the mercury is just going to keep replenishing the vapor. 
Eventually this would take it out, but it could take forever. <laughs> so let's say I take some liquid nitrogen and cool this off. I'm 80% sure this glass can handle it. For this I've turned the light off and let the glass cool. That way the thermal shock won't be quite so bad. Here's a flask of liquid nitrogen. Let's uh, see what happens if I cool it. Theoretically, at liquid nitrogen temperatures, the vapor pressure of mercury should be essentially zero. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it don't break. If it does break, it'll implode and probably throw glass everywhere. That's why I'm wearing some St. Pete squints. To quote Abe. <laughs> okay. So the mercury in there is now frozen. And the glass is cold. Let's turn this light back on it and see if it still spins as quickly as it did. Okay, it's definitely slower, but the question is, is that because the frost is blocking the light or what? Angle the light down like this to get it through a part that's not frosted. Yeah, it's definitely slower. So some of you may comment about the mercury vapor in the atmosphere that I'm breathing. Well, you might be able to hear that the uh, window over there is actually open and this garage doesn't seal very well anyway. So the vapor, as little as there would be, is not gonna build up very much. Plus I'm not in here continuously. Also, this is very similar to an aspirator pump, with the uh, main difference being instead of the flow of liquid pulling the gas out, it's actually the weight of the liquid forcing the gas out of the chamber. You can see as the glass warms up, the vapor pressure of the mercury increases and the radiometer spins faster. To put pressure back into this chamber, what I'll probably have to do is let it run completely out of mercury and then lift this hose up and let all the mercury run through and then it'll suck air into the chamber. Fairly simple. And I think that's the best way to do it without like causing a concussive shock to whatever I've got in the chamber. And the final thing I'd like to mention is the efficiency of this device that I've created here. Obviously I could probably do a lot better if I didn't have that little kink in the tubing right there stopping the mercury. You know, make it more efficient in the beginning. But even still, at what is this, like 34 hours of runtime, uh, the amount of energy that I've actually put into this is very low. I've got two kilograms of mercury, which I have lifted the half meter here probably around 50, 60 times, which sounds like a lot, but that still equates to only around 700 joules of energy, which is the equivalent of running a one horsepower motor for one second. <laughs> and that's to evacuate this chamber here. Uh, my vacuum pump that I've got which can't evacuate to this pressure anyway, but to get to its maximum vacuum, even on a chamber this size, I'd probably have to run it for several minutes. And it's one third horsepower, which means this, is, this pump here is roughly two orders of magnitude more efficient energy-wise than that electric uh, rotary vane pump. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat. And this is 18th century technology here. You know, a pump like this was probably the one that was first used to uh, produce a radiometer. <laughs> so I've actually decided I'm going to take this radiometer off of here. So I'm actually going to heat the glass so that it seals. And I'm going to pull it off and I'll keep it forever in this uh, vacuumed state. I think that'll be appropriate, don't you? Hopefully I can do this without shattering something. <laughs> There it is. And hopefully it still works. And it does. It does still work. Excellent. I mean, I didn't make this radiometer, but I did make the vacuum that it's running in. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Quick note for anyone that wants to try to build one of these. Uh, never stick one finger in this pool of mercury and the other finger in that one. Uh, I did that and got the shock of my life. There's quite an electrical potential buildup between those two. So, just so you know, 